what's poppin'? It's your boy, Jada Comedian. Good morning. How are you? How am I doing? Oh, I feel great. It's a beautiful day. The kids are going back to school soon, which means they're going to still be in my house because of COVID-19. But anyway, I'm good. I've been drinking my Man Titty Reducer 2000. Yes. Cut down on the man boobs. That's right. I'm on my weight loss journey, folks. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to be sexy once again. <laughs> Mark my words. <laughs> yeah, man. And this stuff, is, this stuff is really good. This stuff is supposed to be really, really good. Apparently, it tracks down and hunts the fat inside of your body, catches it in the dark alley, and beats the living hell out of it. Now, yes, it tastes like donkey vomit, but that's how you know it works. <laughs> if it tastes good, it doesn't work. Have you not had a... <laughs> A weight loss journey before? <laughs> anyway, the question you should be asking is how I know what donkey vomit tastes like. And my answer to that is simply, don't ever get drunk on the farm. Because when you get drunk, ugly things start to look cute. <laughs> I've never boned a donkey without its consent. Anyway, today I would like to talk to you guys about taking up the position of no, no matter what you say, I'm not going to change my mind. This is how I feel, and nothing you say will do. Nothing you say or do will change my mind. Because, you see, ladies and gentlemen, that is what I like to call a flawed position. That's not a good, good position to ever be in in life. Now, mind you, sometimes you don't have the time or the energy to put up with some foolishness, but information is always your friend. And you should always at least strive to hear information and at least, if nothing else, you can debunk or just see what the other person is thinking. And this works for almost any situation, like you can take something as ridiculous as, I think white people are better than black people, right? You hear that position and it's easy to be like, all right, you know what? No matter what you say, I'm not going to change my belief that that is incorrect. Now, of course... You gotta just listen to them. That's all you gotta do. So, okay, w explain your reasoning. So they get to say, oh, well, you know, it was black on black crime and, and look at all the violence and the rap music and, and all those things they say. <laughs> now, when you give somebody the opportunity to spell out why they believe the things they believe, not only do you have an opportunity to debunk the stuff that they believe, but you see their line of thought. You see why they believe those certain things. And sometimes it makes sense why they believe them, but they're not looking at the entire picture. You know what I mean? So if you can, if you are allowed to listen to what they say, and then you can point out where their thoughts like are not correct and where they're either not being fair in their rationale or things like that, one, you, they may not accept what you say. You know what I mean? But also, you could even possibly change their mind or change their thinking altogether. You know what I'm saying? And that's simply from listening. And this is something that you could not have done if you just simply pushed off what they were saying as, you know, ridiculous. And sometimes it is. Sometimes the things people tell you are ridiculous. But just remember, when the Jehovah Witnesses... You know, when you talk to a Jehovah Witness, their their goal usually for most people is, I'm not really trying to hear what you got to say. I'm not going to really acknowledge the points you're making. I'm just going to kind of just, you know, hear it and then fire back. <laughs> now, if when you fire back, it's a logical, you know, hit back, you know, then all right, cool. I'm, I'm fine with that. But if the things you're saying don't make any sense, or much less, you have to take a position of immorality. You know what I'm saying? Like to take an immoral position just so your point is 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 you know good. I don't think that's a good thing. I personally don't think that you should have to subject your morality <laughs> to to badness or evilness, you know what I'm saying? Or not, maybe not evilness. Maybe evilness is, is a bad word, but to, instead of being a moral person, just being like, oh, I'm going to say this horrible thing just because it makes my point. Just because it softens, uh, 
the feelings that I have, and it makes me feel good. Because this is the thing. Me personally, right? I have a pretty good gauge of what I'm biased against. You know what I mean? And although sometimes, you know, it's, it's justified, I still need to rationalize within myself and know that I'm biased in these subjects. For instance, uh, and I know people hate the whole, like, politics things, but I'm very biased against Trump, okay? I don't think anything he says is the truth, and I don't believe there's no, like, you know, secret society that's out there and he's fighting them, any of that crazy stuff. I don't believe it. Now, does that mean everything he says is, is a lie and not true? No. And I have to constantly check myself whenever I hear him talk because my immediate reaction is, all right, what is he lying about today? <laughs> but that's not always true. Sometimes, and it has been proven, he tells the truth from time to time. And when he tells the truth, I need to be able to hear him out and then later confirm whether or not it's a lie, unless I just simply don't have the time to. Or if I already know that it's a lie going forward. You know what I'm saying? Like before it even advanced any. But I have to check. I have to check my own biases. Now, the reason I say that is because people who do support him, in some instances, they have their own biases. Like, they're biased against like mainstream media. It's like, no, nah, anything they say is a lie. <laughs> All the information they put out is a lie. That is a bad position to be in. Not everything is a lie. You know what I mean? Not everything is the truth, but not everything is a lie. And if you immediately accept things as being a lie or immediately accept everything as being the truth, then you are in a position of, you know, not really reaching the truth of the matter, you know? And the that should be our goal all the time. That should always be our goal. That's what I really talk to Jehovah Witnesses about. Like, just make sure. If nothing else, like, me convincing somebody and trying to get them to lead an organization or whatever is, is usually the end goal. But for the most part, in between, it's just to get you to think and rationalize. Because it's funny, when people start to rationalize things and really look at things a certain way, they usually stop believing in the Jehovah Witness organization. It's a crazy phenomenon. <laughs> the more rational you are about certain things, the more you're able to say, you know, hey, that's not right. And I'm not afraid to say that that's wrong. People start to leave the organization when it happens. And it's crazy. It's not my fault. I didn't do it. It's just free thinking people. Like I was talking to a loved one the other day, right? A person I love very, very dearly. That's a Jehovah Witness. And they were saying that I know the organization is imperfect. And I know that it does all these things, but I would never leave Jehovah. <laughs> well, see, this is the thing, right? Me personally, I believe if an organization claims to not be perfect, claims to get things wrong and stuff like that, then okay, cool. If you're willing to do that, then there should be zero penalties for questioning anything that happens inside of that organization. Zero penalties. When Dr. Faruli pointed out that they, he didn't like the way that the governing body was set up and he didn't like the way or the rule about, you know, how they really didn't push people to go to college and further their education. And he thought it was like harmful to their members and to the organization itself. He was this fellowship for that. <laughs> Why? That's my question. Why? If the organization is not perfect, it is not a perfect organization. How can you then... But, you know, get people in trouble for, for going against the organization. That shouldn't be a thing. Like, I'm not perfect. And if somebody's like, hey, Jay, I thought you were on the diet. What are you doing eating those hamburgers? I can't punch him in the face. Like, hey, don't call me out. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> no. I have to admit, you know what? You're right. Thanks for pointing that out. I'll try to do better. Or I can say, look, man, I worked out. I deserve this. Whatever. You can point, you can make your position or not. But to penalize and to punish people who call you out on a flawed position, 
that literally just proves you're a cult. And you're punishing people for going against what you say. What happened? You can't be a imperfect organization and also be an organization that don't allow people to question it. You know what I mean? You can't do both. It's one or the other. <laughs> it's like trying to be fat and skinny at the same time. You can't do it. You're either or, you know? Man breasts. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Y'all have as good a day as I'm having. And, um... Yeah, like the video, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, I guess I'll probably talk to you guys tomorrow. All right? It's your boy, Jay the Comedian. Holla at your guala. Deuces.